And so you came from where you said in Iran that it was a very different type of school system. You went to a music conservatory and you also um, fenced. Can you tell me about that? And then coming from that to just a regular United States curriculum. Well, going to conservatory over there, we studied intensely. We had uh, two piano lessons a week, minimum of two hours a day practice. And we studied uh, music, dictation, composition, history, theory all day. And then afterwards, uh, one day I ran into someone that was fencing that absolutely fascinated me. I thought quick thinking and fast on your feet and uh, winning was the name of the game. And I started to uh, cut out some of my music thing activities and I started excelling in fencing. And my mother wasn't too sport minded or she wasn't too crazy about sport. So I was kind of on my own and I loved it. Mm -hmm. And my coach turned out to be a friend of my father, that great admiration for him. So he took me under his wing and really guided me. And how long did you fence for? Until I came to America. And then um, it's funny because I, I know you fence, but I never think of you as kind of fast on your feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I find it funny that you were, you were a fencer, but um, so you came to the United States and instead of having the curriculum of, you know, music and fencing, it was the, the just academics and whatnot. You also, your name is Taterne. How did you get the nickname Thai? Well, those days they had never heard of foreign names, so they said, can we call you Thai? And I thought, since they play joke all the time, maybe this is another joke. I thought, okay, for that day. And then every day they started to call me the same name and it stuck. So I never signed Thai, but I go by the name Thai. And I'm mostly known by Thai. What was the biggest shock, you think, when you came to the United States? The language, the culture, to not have the know-how and the do's and don'ts. How, how are we, how is the United States culturally different than Iran or the well, Middle East in general? Some things are a yes here and a no over there and vice versa. Like uh, over there, it's okay to ask somebody how much do you make because it doesn't matter how much you make, it's what you do with what you make. And over here they say, come and see me. Well, it's an arrogant statement to them because it shows how lazy you are that you want others to come and see you. you we should take the effort to go see others. Mm -hmm. And how did you meet your husband? Did you? Oh, he was an athlete, the star in high school. He was a wrestling champion. He was a, a all state guard playing football. Mm -hmm. He was academic, athletic. Why not? I said, I'll take <laughs> that one. <laughs> so why, well also, you came here, um, was it with the thought that you would never go back to Iran, that you were coming here to get your education and then eventually everybody would go back? Or, and along that lines, did you ever think, I never want to marry an American? I know you were still young then, or did you think, I'm going back to Iran and really I need to keep my culture and my people and, and marry someone Iranian. I really did want to go back home and marry somebody from my own culture and contribute to the society I had been born to. But when I fell in love with America, I thought, well, that must be my destiny. So I made my home here. Mm -hmm. And when you went to college, um, you had an interesting story about him writing you letters. Yeah, he realized that uh, I was very homesick, and of course those days there was no way talking on the phone. There was telegram, and of course letters hardly ever came. So he was going to Miami University, and he was so thoughtful, he wrote me every day. Was it just, hi, how are you, or? No, he was uh, wrestling, and um, he was making a lot of good friends. So he just kind of told you everything he was he, doing? He told me about his day. How often did you write him back? <laughs> Ooh, uh, maybe once a week. <laughs> um, so when you married him, 
you married in a Christian church. You're mm -hmm. still a you were born and raised a Muslim. You're mm -hmm. still a Muslim, mm -hmm. um, but we attended church together as a family in in uh, growing up and still now because there's a lot of churches and a lot of community um, in the Midwest, especially in Richmond. But why? What do you think of your four sisters? Two converted from Muslim to Christianity, and two of you, inclu including yourself, did not. Why do you think? For you yourself, why didn't you, or why do you think the other sisters did convert? And I really don't know why they did, because it's the same God that the Christians and the Muslims share. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe God the Creator. And I suppose the main difference is that uh, Christians think that if they believe in Christ, they're going to heaven. And I feel like God is going to hold me accountable. I do you tried... think they felt pressure to convert? Or they did it well, because of their husbands, or well, why? Partially because of their husband, mm -hmm. because they wanted uh, to totally become Americanized. Mm -hmm. But to me, I am my own person, and uh, not that they're not, but uh, I feel like God will have mercy on me for, for the sins I have done and uh, will hold me accountable. Right. And as you attended church, because I remember going, you know, religiously, every Sunday, um, did you feel, was the church, were the parishioners welcoming to you? Were they, she's the Muslim, why is she here? Or what, how did they treat you? They welcomed me with open arms. I go there for fellowship. Mm -hmm. I have made a lot of quality friends. And they know me. And they have never, ever said any harsh word to me. Mm -hmm. They have accepted me with open arms. Right. 